you everybody for joining the webinar this morning. This morning's topic we're going to cover is auto reports in Tiger 2020 Pro. So we're going to look at all aspects of the auto reports, how to generate auto reports, how to edit auto reports, and look at all the extra bits of configuration maybe you've not ever looked at before, or maybe you didn't even know existed. Some of the features that I may show you may not be available in your current release of software that you're running. So you'll just need to contact your account manager to get these enabled. If you do have any questions, if you can please place these in the chat window and I will answer them at the end of the session. So let's get started on how to create auto reports. So we should all be familiar of getting to the reporting screen here. So there are two ways to create a auto report. First of all, you can select your dates and any extra filtering that you may require. So you may require a specific filter or quick filter here. So if I select a filter, I can then choose a particular report. I can choose my view here and then I can schedule my report by then clicking on the hand at the top here and setting it as an auto report. By selecting this, it will take all of the current settings I have on this screen into my auto report. So when I click on this, it will now create a wizard. So I need to give this a description. So let's call this monthly departmental bill. Once I've given the report a description, I will then click on the next button. Now, because I've already selected this information on my previous screen, all of these boxes will be pre-populated for me. But if you wish to, you can override, say, the view, or you can re-choose a different report type or the report class. Once you have this selected, click Next. You can then look at the report types. But again, these would have all been pre-populated because we select these on the previous screen. Again, to select different types, just simply click on the report. When we click next, again, if I would have populated any of this information on my previous screen, this information will be brought through. Or again, you can override these bits of information. With filters, again, if you've pre-selected one, these will be automatically selected here. If you want to change the filter, you can. Or maybe you want to double check what that filter is going to do. You can hover over the filter and it will tell you information about that. Then you can also change your filter by clicking on the filter information and then maybe editing, copying or creating a new one. On certain reports, it will then ask you to select which levels you would like to be included in the report. So these are around all the departmental reports, selecting which levels that you would like. So to choose which levels you would like included in the report, you'll need to click the change button and then you can select which levels you would like in the report. So if you would like to see level one, two and three, you can put them in here and then maybe you would like a page break at level two. So you can specify in here the page break. Also in here are the report options. So you can choose the report options you would like to appear on your auto report. So it may be you want to include call cool details or show page breaks. Once you've set the parameters for those reports, simply then click OK. It will now display here what parameters you have set for that particular report. Obviously due to time, but I'm not going to go through every single report, but these will vary from report to report. And we'll have a look at a couple of these parameters in a few moments. Once I've selected those parameters, it will now come to the distribution of the report. So the first and most important one here is the file format. Which format would you like the report to be delivered in? If it's sent in a Tiger format, not many people will be able to open this only if you have Tiger installed. So I'd recommend changing it to maybe an Adobe Acrobat PDF or grid to CSV or maybe even an Excel spreadsheet. Grid to CSV will be what you see on the screen before you click the report button. PDF will be the report. If you click the report button, what is in there in the pre-formatted report. Once you've selected the file format, 
If you do wish to print the report and print on completion, you can tick this box and select which printer you would like it to be printed on. You can also define how many reports you would like to retain. You can have a maximum of 14 reports retained. In here, you can change this to say, I want to keep my last 10 reports here. Now, later on, I will show you how to look at these previous reports if you ever need to view them again. File name. This will be the name of the report. So I could call this departmental cost summary monthly. Then who would I like this to be emailed to? So I can type in the email addresses of all the people I would like this to be emailed to. I can then CC people, or I can add more names onto this list. And then I can add in a main message body to this. So I could say, and then I can use these tags here to put information in there. So that will be what goes into the main email message body of the report when it's delivered. If I wish it to be published somewhere, so let's say I would like this to be placed in a location or a drive somewhere, or I would like it published to an FTP space, you could choose one of your predefined published locations. And again, later on, I will show you how to create these predefined published locations. For now, let's just look at email and look at sending these to a particular email address. To remove emails, you can delete them here as well. Once you've completed this section, simply click next. It will now ask you for the frequency. So this is talking about how often the report will be delivered. At the moment, this screen does not contain how much data is contained in those reports. It's just how often the report is going to be delivered. So you could say, I want it to be delivered every day, every week, starting on a particular day, starting at a particular time, or every month. So I may want this to be performed every month on the first day at half past midnight. So this is how often the report is going to run. So in my instance here, I want a monthly bill. So I'm going to run it every month on the first day of the month. I will now click next and it will then specify how much data you want it to contain. So I could get it to run every month, but only contain the current day's data. I could get it to run every month and get it to only include one day's worth of data. I could get it to run every month, but only get it to include one week's worth of data. Or I could get it to run every month for the previous month's worth of data, or even the previous six months worth of data. So if you're looking for trends, maybe you need to have six months of data to look back on the previous six months. You then define what is your month or when does your month start. So I can say my month starts on the first day, but it could be that your billing data runs on the 24th. So once I've selected my billing period, so I'm going to say, right, it will be one month. I can click next. And it's just going to ask me, do I want this report to be disabled or enabled? In my instance, I would like this to be enabled. And it will now say, well, when do you want this to next execute? So it will calculate when the next execution date is due based upon the settings you've told it. If you were though to set this back into the past, what it will do is go, I didn't run the report on the 1st of August. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run that now. So it will run on the 1st of August for July's data. It will then go to September and run August. It will then go to October and run September's and so on until it catches up to its current date. So by clicking on here and clicking OK, it will now go off and generate those reports for me. So how do I now look at the reports that I've created and how do I look at what they have done? So to do this, there is a clock on the top of the reporting screen called Auto Report Scheduler. If I click on this, it will now show me all of my reports that I have currently configured. 
I can look at these here by highlighting the reports and right clicking, and then it gives me some options. Now I could simply modify a report. So if I go to my call information report here, I have set up, I can right click, I can modify. And again, it will take me back through my wizard where I can click next, next, and look at all of the different settings that are available to me. Before I spoke about having different report options. So in this option, in this report here, my options are that I can limit the amount of items that are available on the report. So say I want the top 500 items in this report. And then on my next screen, I can get them to sort by cost by maybe talk time. So here I'm looking at the top 500 calls by cost. And then I can have the most expensive or the least expensive calls. So as you go through the reports, you will see that you will get different options available to you as you go through the wizard. Again, you may set an email address in here or set a published location. And then you can go through and set the report. Now it could be that you want to disable this report. So you could go through the wizard, then set it as disabled and then click OK. By setting it as disabled, you don't get the opportunity to move on to specify a next execution because you've disabled the report. Also within this screen here, you can highlight these reports and look at bulletins. Bulletins give you information about what's happened on the report. So I can see here that the report that ran here had no calls, but it did successfully send the information to this email address. Again, there were no calls, but it did successfully send an email address. And on the final one, it must have had calls because it hasn't warned me. So it has delivered an email to support at tigercoms.com. You can scroll through the list or you can print this list also. So if there are any errors or problems with the reports, you'll be able to look in the bulletins and it will tell you what's happened with those reports. You can also reschedule this report by clicking on the reschedule and it will just take you to the last three screens of the wizard. You can quickly enable and disable by ticking and unticking this box here. You can also view previous outputs. So if a user comes to you and says, oh, I lost the report, I must have deleted it by accident. Rather than having to regenerate the report, you can either view output, open the report, or you can go to the output location. And in here will be the PDF file that you could copy and send it to the user again. Because you would have specified how many items you would like to keep. So here, if I look at my view output, I've asked it to keep my last 10 reports. It will then only keep 10 reports information available in that folder for me. So when the 11th report runs, it will delete the oldest report. Again, I can look at my output location and I'll be able to see all of those files available that I could then possibly copy, view, or do what I would need to with that information. When you copy an auto report, what this will do is take all of the settings from the previous report and ask you to give it a new name. If you try and continue with the same name, when you go to save it at the end, it will come up with a failure. So I'm just going to give this a slightly different name. As you'll see, all the settings from the previous reports will be there, but maybe I want to change my filter slightly on this report. It would have brought through all the information to so all the email addresses. And then I can click save. And I've now created pretty much the same report, 
but with a slightly different filter on it. So it's much quicker if you have a template that you can copy these reports and then recreate them again. You could also look at the details of the reports by going to details and view, and it will tell you all the information about that particular report, what you have set, who it's going to be emailed to, and you can come into here as well and look at the filter information here. So rather than going through the wizard, if you'd like to find out more information, then you can simply highlight the report and click on the details and view. You can also add reports by coming into this screen and clicking add and again following the wizard. This time it won't have any settings set, so you will have to manually populate the information as you go through the wizard. To delete any reports, simply highlight the report and click delete at the bottom here. This will then permanently delete the report rather than suspending the report. So disabling means that it will still there and you can enable at any point. Deleting means it will be permanently deleted from the system. So let's now look at some of the features with auto reports you may not have looked at before. So in the reporting screen, you have report configuration. In here are some settings that you can apply to your auto reports. Things like you may not want the report title to appear in an auto report, so you can hide this. You may not want the filter name to appear in the auto report. Again, you can hide this here. Maybe you want to change the report description. OK, so if I run a departmental cost summary report, it will say departmental cost summary. But maybe you would like it to show the description of the auto report. So by selecting this, it will now change the description on the report to be the description you've typed in rather than the report type name. Maybe I want to update all of my auto report to have a generic message. So what I can do is I can come in here, I can type in a generic message. For my subject line, I can type in And what I can now do is I can do a mass update on all of my auto reports by clicking update. Now, obviously we wouldn't recommend doing this unless you really have to, but if I click this here now, it will update all my auto reports to have that message. And I'll go and show you that in a few moments time. Also on the report, you could also change the company name to be something slightly different. So these are the settings that override all of the auto reports. So by setting these, these affect the way the auto reports are output. So let me just quickly show you about this updating of all the auto reports. So if I now go into an auto report and I click modify and go to here, you'll now see that all of my email bodies have been updated with the message I previously put in the screen. And if I show this one as well. So if there's a generic, let's say it's a GDPR message that needs to go on all of them, you can do a mass update on all of the emails to contain that information. But any custom information that was put in those message bodies will be deleted and overridden with what you selected. So just be warned on that front. So that's all the settings that are available in the report configuration and changing those custom settings in there. One of the other things that we looked at is saving auto reports to locations. Now, unfortunately, you can't set the locations through the front interface here. They are to be configured only on the server. So to configure them on the server, what you'll need to do is you will need to go on to the server. If you don't have access to this, you could either contact support and we could make this option available on iTiger, 
or you could ask your department IT department to maybe give you access to this folder here to run the application. So within the Tiger 2020 folder, there should be an application called TIG Setup. So this application here called TIG Setup, you'll need to double click on this and log on to TIG Setup. This will be your username and password that you would normally log on to Tiger with. In here, you will then have a tab called Publish Locations. So this is where you set locations to either save to a network path or to an FTP path. So if I click Add at the bottom and give this a name, I can then choose the location of where I would like to drop these. So I can come and either select somewhere on the network or on the local drive. Or I can type in the FTP server name and the port number and the base directory and the username and password. If I have not given the file name when I set up my auto report a different name each time, you can then force it to override the file each time that it generates. If you've given it a unique name, then you don't need to worry about this option here. It then also gives the option to test the connection just to make sure that you can connect to the FTP site. I don't have a current one, so I'm just going to click cancel to this. But here you can see one I created earlier for the webinars. Let's also look at SMTP settings while we're here. So it may be that you currently cannot deliver emails from your Tiger 2020 system. So what you'll need to do is look in the same place. So within TIG Setup, you'll need to go to SMTP settings. And in here, you will see any SMTP servers you may have. So here I can just click add. And what I can do is I can then go and look to see, type in the SMTP server. And it may be your SMTP server requires authentication. So you may have to type in a username and password. If you have one in there and it's maybe not working, what you can do is you can highlight this and click test and just send a simple test message from an email address to an email address and a simple message here. When you click this, if there are any error messages or warnings or problems, it will pop these up on the screen. If everything is successful, it will say it sent the message successfully. If you have any problems, you'll just need to refer to your IT department about setting this up. So in the TIG setup, you'll be looking at the published locations and the SMTP settings. It may be as well in the graphics, you may want to change your logo for your auto report. That is also stored in here. And again, you would need to load new and go and select your report logo that you would like to attach on your reports. Finally, we just need to look at what email address the reports will be sent from. So when you create a user account to under system and administer user accounts, in here, the email address that you select, you type in this box here, will be the email address that the auto report comes from. So if you would like the reports to come from a generic account, what you'll need to do is create a generic auto report account and give it a password. And then you could give this report a generic email address here. And by doing this, all reports will now come from this email address. So you would set all the auto reports up under this account, and then all reports will be delivered from this email address. If you do set them up from under your account, 
you may find that all the auto reports may come from your email address. In some instances, that may be fine. In other instances, it may not be fine. So you could look at creating a special account just for setting up auto reports. Thank you for watching. We hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And if there's anything else you'd like to learn about Tiger 2020 and its other features, please visit www.tigercoms.com for more tutorials and information.